Now, Angela, there's a new royal book. Now, you've seen plenty of royal books in your time. This one gives us an insight into the Queen's view on Meghan. And it's not all bad news, is it? No, no, you're quite right. And yes, I have read a lot of royal books in my time of, of varying <laughs> quality. Uh, look, this is by Ingrid Seward, who was the uh, editor of Majesty magazine. She has some good sources for this, including Lady Elizabeth Anson, who is the Queen's cousin. So, you know, a named source. There are a lot of royal books with unnamed sources. And what she says is that, uh, that the late Queen would speak to uh, Lady Elizabeth every week and that what she thought of Meghan was she thought very highly of her. She thought she would do some extraordinary work, that she would be brilliant uh, at the forefront of the Commonwealth. But she had a couple of really interesting observations. One was that she thought that uh, Meghan's wedding dress was too white, uh, that, you know, that the Meghan obviously being uh, a divorcee should not wear such a bright white dress. And she also wasn't in favour of Charles walking Meghan up the aisle. If you remember, uh, Meghan's father, Thomas Markle, of course, didn't uh, attend the wedding and Charles stepped in to uh, walk it down down the aisle. Well, the Queen apparently wasn't a huge fan of that. Pandora, Prince Philip's alleged views are also shared in this book. Tell us about them. Yeah, Prince Philip, didn't he make some headlines over the years with his comments? Um, he didn't hold back. And that was one of the things that I think the public loves so much about him in many ways, even though at times, obviously, very inappropriate and very un-PC, um, uh, given, given today's view on things. But uh, he was, of course, uh, referring uh, to Wallace Simpson uh, and King Edward when he abdicated and he was making um, a a alleged uh, comments in reference to them and also bringing it back to, to Meghan and Harry. And they, of course, have stepped down from senior working royal duties and moved to the other side of the world as far away from their family as possible um, and making sort of brief uh, fleeting visits to the UK uh, when they can and if it's urgent enough to. Uh, so, yes, that's what he was saying. But Prince Harry has got a, a huge, a huge amount of respect, and he did have a huge amount of respect for him and for the late Queen. So I'm sure their opinion really did matter when it came down to it. And, of course, the Queen, the late Queen, was in charge, wasn't she? So whatever she said went, um, and she she did like uh, Meghan. So I'm sure she was very much in charge of that that whole conversation and that whole debate, I imagine, around the dinner table. <laughs> I love the way that uh, Harry refers to the Queen as the boss. I thought that was absolutely excellent <laughs> yeah, and, and very so true, good. obviously, so of good. her station. <laughs> Angela, the royal family being pulled at the seams, obviously two senior royals still out of action for the time being. Interesting report this week about the importance of Sophie, the Duchess of Edinburgh, not only to the royal family now, and we know she's working very hard at the moment, but also into the future. What are they saying? Look, there's a lot of talk about the fact that uh, Sophie will be Kate's right-hand woman when she becomes queen, much in the manner that Princess Anne is the right-hand woman to to King Charles. I think this is interesting. Look, if, if Sophie was in a royal yearbook, you would have her as the quiet achiever. She's 59, she does a lot of work, but she was stung because back in 2001, I was working um, around in the UK around this time, there was a... She, she got entrapped by a tabloid news newspaper uh, uh, with a fake chic and she said some dreadful things about British Prime Ministers and other people of high importance. She had to apologise to them and I think as a PR girl, you know, that, that was her job before she married Edward and she tried to continue with that job. It really, really stung her at the time and I think she's taken a very cautious approach since. But she is wholly reliable. She steps into areas like Camilla, talking about domestic violence. She, she talked recently about um, young girls and menstruation she shines the spotlight on lots of areas that that you know don't really get, get a lot of airtime and I think she will be a, a, she was a huge favorite of the Queen absolutely they used to watch television together in the evenings and uh, I think she's a very loyal now very very reliable member of the royal family and Pandora I've only got about 20 or 25 seconds less what what's your view on that 
Yeah, absolutely. Echoing um, everything that's just been said. Um, this is really a time where people are stepping up into their roles. We've got a new monarchy here. Uh, they really do need to all come together, especially as the, the Waleses are out of action and the King for the next week or so. So it's really giving the opportunity for people to shine a light on topics that they really want uh, to be shone upon. The Queen, for instance, uh, with her domestic um, abuse uh, 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 campaigning um, as and well. Uh, we've have to seen jump in the past. I need so. to get to a <laughs> yeah, break. <of> course. <laughs> Sorry for that. Angela Pandora, thank you so much for joining us.